Hi everybody, so in this lesson you were looking at how to um, perform some basic mathematical operations in Python. So we're just using like the main kind of um, operators, so the plus minus uh, multiplication and division, and we're just going to look at how to basically apply a formula to um, a program. All right. so basically how that works is um, let's say you had a formula you wanted to apply, and I'm going to make something very simple. So like 2 times uh, x plus y. All right. So let's say that was a formula that you cared about, um, and x and y were variables that you needed information from. So what has to happen is basically you can't just write the formula out. You actually have to store the, the results of that calculation in a variable. So all your mathematical manipulations basically would look something like this. So you'd have a variable equals to and then some type of uh, math manipulation or formula that you wanted to apply to the variables. So what the program does is it will always start on the right hand side of this equation and when it sees a variable it will go ahead and fill that variable in with whatever value is located at that location in memory. Right? It will follow the rules of Bedmas and then it will perform the entire calculation over here and store the result um, into that variable in the computer's memory so you can access it again. So one thing you do need to remember is that um, you can't put the variable, uh, sorry, the math equation on the left side of the equation. It's always the variable on the left and the formula that you're using on the right. Okay, it does. It's not like a math equation where you can flip it around and it won't matter. Okay, uh, here it matters. So variable on the left, mathematical manipulation on the on, on the right. Make sure you follow the rules of Bedmas. So let's say we wanted to write a pretty simple program that um, asks the user for three numbers and then uh, say prints out the average. Of those numbers. Um, so we know how to calculate an average, it's just you add up all the numbers and you divide by the total number of numbers that you used. So uh, in this case we would just have three numbers, say num1, num2, num3. Uh, we have to get that information from the keyboard, right? Um, so in order to perform the calculation you actually have to have a value uh, in in the variables. Right? Uh, if I didn't I can show you what, what it would do. Um, so Let's actually try that. So let's say you had like a result. So you had your num1, your num2, your num3, and you had to find the average and you divide by 3. So now you have to be careful here because um, it, by following the rules of Bedness, it would do division first. So if, if I didn't do anything else to this, it would um, it would do this calculation first and then add num1, num2, but that's not what we want, right? We have to add up all the numbers first. All right and then divide by 3. So when you're doing division, when there's a whole bunch of variables on the numerator denominator of the fraction, then um, make sure you're putting brackets around it. Okay. And then I, know, I guess you could just print the results of the screen. If I tried to run this program, it wouldn't work because there are no values right, um, in num1, num2, num3. So when it's doing a calculation, you might see this error. Okay. It means it doesn't know what one of those values are. Uh, so we would need input statements ahead to actually uh, accomplish this task. So you'd need like num1 equals, say, let's say enter a number, okay? And we'd have to do the same thing with num2 and num3, okay? So this way, when we were to run our program, so if I entered 1, 2, 3, okay, my average of the numbers is 2. That makes sense because 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. 6 divided by uh, t 3 is 2. Okay? And then that would work for anything. So you just have a very simple formula that you can apply um, on this scenario. And it doesn't matter how complicated the formula gets. You can always just, um, just make it as complicated as you need it with as many variables as you need it. Okay? All right, now let's suppose you uh, go back to maybe your grade 9 science and uh, if you remember using um, Ohm's law or like with uh, voltage, current, and resistance, uh, you, you might recall that um, in order to calculate the voltage across uh, an electrical device, um, it's just its current times its resistance. So if I wanted to write a program that, say, would, would do that calculation for me, right? Um, 
I would need the two values that I'm going to do the calculation with. So let's say current and resistance. Uh, let's just make them floats, decimal values, because they would often be decimal values if you're doing that in science. Okay, so we'll enter the current. Okay, if you have resistance, uh, so we'll get that in. And okay, so I have to apply the formula. So voltage equals resistance times current. So you just have to make sure that you um, you put the multiplication sign explicitly in. Like what you can't do in, in Python is do something like this. So say current times uh, resistance. Okay, so you don't want to do something like that. Um, I mean, in math it makes sense, but what you want to do is you, you'd want to have like the multiplication sign like explicitly um, between the two variables. You don't even need the brackets. Right, so it's actually less work uh, when you're doing it that way. So just make sure when you when you're doing multiplication that you do the um, that you do the multiplication sign uh, in, in between. So if you want to print that out, it's a pretty straightforward calculation. So what's your current? Let's say five amps, and your resistance is ten ohms. Should give you your your fifty. Um, your 50 volts across the electrical load. Okay. Another example might be to uh, apply uh, a geometry formula to solve some problem that you would have maybe done in grade 9 or 10. So let's say you had a uh, just a simple rectangular prism that you wanted the uh, the surface area and the volume for. Okay. And uh, if you remember what a rectangular prism has, it's got what like a length, a uh, width to the base, and then a, uh, then a height to make it the 3D shape. So um, volume's pretty straightforward. It's just the the length times the width times the height, and the surface area. Uh, you just have to add up the areas of all the different uh, faces of your prism, um, and, and if it's a rectangular prism, then there's it's like two of each kind of two of each type of face, right? You've got the uh, the bottom, which is the width times the length, and the top is the width times the length as well for the area. You've got the two uh, sides. One would be um, like length times height, and the other one would be uh, width times height in order to get the six faces. So you'd have to add all of those up together. So uh, if you wanted to write that program where you were um, trying to find the the volume and surface area, then we would just need those three values. So the, uh, let's just keep it simple, the length, and we'll make them integers. Uh, the width and the height um, oh, I can't type today okay so those are the three values you would need in your formula okay. uh, and then I can do the calculation so if I want volume right that would be um, so a length times width times height. Actually, I probably shouldn't call it a capital V because I told you to, um, when we're doing variable names, that they should probably always start with a lowercase letter. Right. So maybe we'll just do volume. Okay. And then if we want surface area, right? Uh, so there's the width times the length. That's the, the one face, and there's two of them. Uh, and then there is the um, width times the height, and there's two of those as well. And then there's the uh, length times the height, and uh, two of those. Okay. It doesn't really matter if you have these white spaces here between um, between your operators. There's no right or wrong on how to do that. Sometimes you might find spacing things out like that is just easier for somebody looking at the program to kind of understand what's going on, right? Uh, but it's not like it's wrong if you didn't if you didn't put the spaces uh, in there, right? and then you could output your results at the end. So uh, print volume and print uh, surface area. Okay. 
So I don't know whether you had, I mean, you could check these on your calculator if you wanted to, but like, let's say a, a rectangular prism with a uh, length of four, width of two, and a height of one, okay, has a volume of eight and a surface area of 28, whatever units uh, you could decide to use, okay? Um, I guess maybe what you should be trying to see right now is that the, kind of the process of doing these are, are pretty much the same all the time. Uh, you start with getting kind of like input from the user, then you, what we call process that input, right, or do something with the data, okay, and then you kind of uh, print out your results. So uh, in the next lesson, when we talk about uh, problem solving, the, the idea is you're following an input processing output uh, model of problem solving to uh, write all your code. And it does get more complicated than uh, just strictly um, kind of looking at a formula and um, outputting the result. And maybe one more example of something that would be quite common for, or maybe useful to somebody would be, say, a, uh, a bill at a restaurant calculating the, uh, I don't know, maybe calculating the tax um, on a bill at a restaurant. So uh, in order to do that, you'd need the uh, subtotal of the bill. So that's what the, the before tax cost is. And that will be a decimal number more, more than likely. Okay. So enter the subtotal of the bill. And then if you wanted to calculate the tax, well, if we're in Ontario, then that's a 13% tax. So uh, you would take your subtotal and multiply it by 0 0.13. Okay. Um, you could have it, if you didn't like doing the division by 100, you could say it's 13% divided by 100. Okay, that would work as well. But uh, I think that's pretty straightforward. And then your final total is going to be your subtotal plus the oops, tax. Okay. So you can break up calculations. I mean, I could have done this all in one line if I really wanted to. Um, so I could have just put this here okay, and not even had a variable for the tax. Okay, so I could have gotten rid of that. But there is nothing wrong with, um, say, using other variables to do calculations. So if you have a pretty long calculation, you might want to do like parts of it first and store it in a variable, then do, do another part and store it in a variable, do another part, store it in a variable. Um, just to keep things organized for yourself. And that might even be useful if you wanted to print out those values to check what's going on. Like if I had a restaurant bill, I might want to know what the actual amount of tax was and the final total. So you might have something like your subtotal is, so you print that out. If you want to make it look like a receipt, right? If you're writing a program that printed receipts out uh, from a register or something like that, then you would probably want to display all of this information on the bill. So it would make sense in this case to set, to uh, calculate the uh, tax separately so you can display it. Okay. And your final total at the end. Okay. So something easy to check. So if your subtotal was 100 uh, and 13% tax would be $13. Um, so your total is $113. Okay. Uh, and if you wanted to make it prettier, you could maybe add the dollar signs. You could round, um, we'll teach you how to round the answers as well. Like I didn't use any kind of crazy numbers here, but um, if you're doing the, the calculations, especially with divisions, you might get uh, super long decimal places. So you might need to... Um, uh, to look into how how we can display that data a little a little better. Let's see if I can do that here with a kind of a crazy number. So if, okay, so something like that, right? So if my subtotal is 107.35, my tax is 13.95.5 or 99.99.99. Okay, um, so that would not be something we'd want to display on the screen all the time. We'd probably want to round that. So uh, late. In an, I believe in the next video we kind of talk about uh, how you might want to do that. And the final thing I wanted to talk about in this video is um, in programming languages there's usually uh, a bunch of different types of uh, division that you can actually do. Then they might be 
they might be beneficial depending on your problem. Okay, so there's something called just like there's your normal division that you're used to. Uh, there's something called integer division, and there's something called uh, modulo or modulus division as well. Okay, uh, so integer division will just give you the like the the whole number result of your um, of the division between the, the numerator and denominator. Uh, and the modulus operator, that's actually going to give you the remainder uh, between the uh, the two divisions. So if I have two values, uh, let's say uh, x is 27 and y is, say, 4, okay, and I were to, say, apply those different uh, divisions to those, to those numbers here. So if I did uh, x divided by y, that's your normal division. Um, if you did two division signs like that. That's a symbol of your um, integer division. And uh, the percent operator is the remainder, or the modulus division. So if, if I were to do something like this, okay, let's see if this makes sense uh, when, you're, when you're doing the calculations. Okay, so 27 divided by 4, if you did that on your calculator, you would get exactly 6.75. That just makes sense. Okay. So when you do x with an integer division of y, it is just taking that 6, okay? It is basically just lopping off all of the decimal, and we don't care about that, okay? And then you have this um, modulus uh, answer here. So some people might think it would give you the 0.75. Well, that's not correct. That's not the remainder. The remainder is you have to kind of think about... Um, like you're back to elementary school when you're doing long division, okay? So when you divide uh, 27 by 4, you get 6, okay? Now, 6 times 4 would be the biggest value you could get um, when you do that division. That's 24, right? So that would leave you a remainder of 3, when you um, were to do that calculation. So 6 times 4 is 24, 27 minus 24 is 3. So that's your remainder when you do when you do the calculation. Okay. Uh, if you want to see that in, say, a different number, so let's say you use 14 and 3. Okay. Um, so what's that going to spit out? So 14 divided by 3 is 4.6666 repeated on your calculator. Right. The integer division gives you the 4. Now the remainder... Okay, so uh, since 4 was the biggest value that went in, 4 times 3 is 12, right? That's the biggest you could get. So 14 minus the 12 gives you 2. So that gives you your uh, remainder calculation. Okay, that might be useful um, sometimes, maybe not so much in this course, maybe next year uh, in grade 12 you might see that a little bit more. But just be aware um, that this does exist. Perhaps maybe the only thing that you would use the the percent operator for would be is if you're looking for, uh, say, factors or divisors of of uh, numbers, because you can tell that one number is divisible by another number if the remainder is zero. Okay, so if you did um, say twelve and three, okay, um, so the remainder is zero, which means that uh, three is divisible or so twelve is divisible by three. Okay, so that's going to be a, a check that you can do um, later on in the course when we learn about if statements to, um, to see whether one number is divisible by another number.